Hello, my name is Adam Bushnell and I'm the co-author of the book Descriptosaurus Story Writing. And now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about creating a narrative story with your class. Now I write lots of stories. I write books, uh, children's books, as well as books for teachers about creative writing in the classroom. And what I'm going to talk to you about now are the sorts of activities that I do when I work as a visiting author, when I'm teaching creative writing in the classroom. Now, using this descriptosaurus, I can look at the section which Alison talked about earlier, which was to do with characters. And she also mentioned creatures. Now that's the part that we're going to jump straight in on now to create a narrative about a creature. Now this narrative is going to be a first person narrative. So the children are going to imagine that they are in the story. They are the main character, which for ages five to nine, is something that children seem to naturally do anyway. When they're in the early years and beyond, into key stage one and into lower key stage two, they very much put themselves at the heart of the story. And we're going to use that for our narrative. Now, our narrative is going to be to create a creature. I'm going to use page 80, which is chapter 18. And it says they're characters, and specifically to do with villains. Now, looking down the nouns section, I can see one of the nouns leaping out at me straight away, and that is the noun tentacles. So we're going to create a creature that has tentacles. Now, you and I, we might think that that noun is a rather closed thing. If the creature's got tentacles, okay, so it's like an octopus. But children's imaginations, they are incredible things. Where you and I might imagine that a creature has tentacles that look like this, Children might imagine that the tentacles are coming out of the monster's ears or coming out of the creature's nose or they have different types of tentacles on their hands or on their body somewhere. And looking at a different noun as well and looking at this word claws. Now claws is a lot more open than tentacles because claws can be interpreted in a range of different ways. It could be claws like a T-Rex or it could be claws like a lobster. It could be scorpion's claws. It could be a variety of different creatures' claws. But the first step in creating this creature is looking at the different nouns that are listed in that grid format, in the table format of the descriptosaurus. And I would give these nouns and discuss them with my class and ask the children to choose some of those nouns to begin to assemble their own creature, their own mythical creature, a made-up creature that's never been seen before. Once they've got those initial ideas, then we can look at the phrases inside the Descriptosaurus. And the phrases that are jumping out to me are things like a monster, part eagle and part scorpion. Or a creature with the body of a lizard and the head of a giant wasp. So we can say to the, cre say to the children that what they're doing to create their creature is mixing different animal parts together. They might look down phrases such as a long thin snout. And that could be the starting point to their creature. Here's one that I've got with a long, thin snout. It is a mixture of an elephant with a giraffe, with a tiger, with a zebra, with a lion. And it's these kinds of creatures that those words, the nouns and the phrases, the noun phrases, that start to paint a picture in children's minds. After they've designed their own creature, they then might start looking at the verb phrases. For example, my creature might be as quick as lightning, or it squirted deadly poison, or it sprays venom from its tail, or it pounded through the forest. Once the children have examined those different phrases and perhaps labelled their own creature and experimented with some of the language, some of the phrases from here, that's when we can start to look at the sentences and how the children can complete their own sentences to describe their creature. After they've got a description, Magpie taking ideas from the Descriptosaurus but tweaking them slightly to make it their own, then the children can move on to an action scene. So once you've completed with that chapter 18 from Descriptosaurus story writing, we can move very smoothly onto chapter 19, which is entitled Defeating a Villain. Now I would go to the action scene and ask the children to imagine that they are standing there, as is their newly created creature. And what can they do to have a battle with this creature? There's nothing more disappointing as a teacher when you've 
given the children all this lovely vocabulary, their descriptive sentences that they've been working on all throughout the week have been amazing, and then you get to the end of the narrative, and all of a sudden, I chopped the creature's head off, it died, the end. Or, I gave it some food, it turned good, the end. When children race to an ending, it can make for a disappointing piece of writing. And the Descriptosaurus can help with that. There are sentence starters here, which might enable the children to imagine, first of all, what their monster does, but then what they do. And then what the monster does, and what they do. And they can take turns going back and forth and back and forth by using a different phrase each. The ones that I've highlighted here are at once. So what does the monster do at once? And I would refer back to those verb phrases, things that we were talking about earlier, where the creature might have squirted deadly poison, or it might have sprayed venom from its tail, etc, etc. So we keep referring back to the language that we've already explored. But then the children have to imagine what they do too. So at the same time, I went diving off to one side. All of a sudden, the monster it used its long snout and began to suck up everything in its path. Straight away, I had to run in the other direction. And so the children go back and forth and back and forth to create the action scene. My recommendation is that the monster, the creature that they've created, does three things and the children do three things. But they take turns with those three things. So the monster does something with an action scene phrase, then the children do something. The monster does something else, the children do something. The monster does a final thing, the children do something. And then we come to the end of our action scene. So I'll turn the page to page 88 and go to the section called ending the action. And we might use a phrase like finally or eventually or after all of that in order to conclude the action. So to create a short narrative using Descriptosaurus story writing, I would look at those two chapters, chapters 18 and 19. Designing a creature, using all that rich and lovely vocabulary to describe it, and then moving on to the next chapter to create an action scene. Now, hopefully, you will be able to create an excellent story with your class. Please feel free to look out for Alison and I on social media, looking for at author Adam or at Descriptosaurus1, and let us know how you get on with creating narratives with your class.